Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. We are back with episode 292 of the Online Success Journey. Our guest today is a successful entrepreneur who is excited to share the very steps they took to build their business. And you will want to subscribe right now and ensure you'll never miss a journey like this one. Joining us today is Yolis Bryan, the founder and the CEO of Dexter Agency, a remote team of e-commerce conversion optimization and email marketing specialist. Hello, Yolis. Hi, patients. Great to How be are here. You? Oh, yeah, thank fine. you. Thank you. My audience are excited to hear your story, but just by telling us one thing we are going to learn from you today that will help us on our journey to success. So... One thing really for me, it's, it's all about what is working with what you already have. I think a lot of people are focused on shiny objects and getting more traffic mm-hmm. and trying a lot of new tactics, but forget they already have a lot. And that's what our agency basically is specialized in is really working w- what you already have. We work with visitors that you already have to your site, uh, transactions that you already have on your site and uh, customers you already have and how you can get more out of that. Hmm. That's great. I can't wait to hear about that. But let's get started with basics. Can you tell my audience a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your own online business? Sure. Um, I've been in uh, marketing for, uh, I think, almost 20 years now. So uh, a long time. I I started my career in uh, classical advertising agencies, and I worked in uh, those agencies for about 10 years almost. But um, by the end, I got like really bored of it because there was a lot of discussions about um, uh, change this, make this blue, make this red, make it bigger, make it smaller, put this logo here, put this logo there. And it went on and on and on, but it all based on gut feeling. And uh, I just ended up almost hating it. Uh, although there were a lot of fun times as well. Uh, and a lot of it, I learned a lot, but um, I just got fed up with it. And, and uh, I rolled into online marketing and uh, first, like a lot of online marketing people, I, I started out doing SEO and PPC. And one time I, um, I went to a conference and I learned about conversion optimization. And um, basically what I realized there was that conversion optimization brings together a lot of things that um, I, I uh, got a lot of experience with in classical advertising agencies like uh, psychology, design, copywriting, but with the added bonus of a lot of data as well, it's really data driven. And so all those endless discussions uh, I used to have in agencies and advertising agencies about make it blue, make it red is now mm-hmm. like, oh, let's test it and, and let's see what the data tell us. And um, so I, I, I kind of fell in love with it and I yeah, learned anything, I, everything I could learn about it, took courses, read books, and, and I started venturing out on my own first as a freelancer and that um, turned into an agency almost six years ago now. And from there, it, it, it grew and, and we've, we've been working for with e-commerce companies um, uh, ever since and, and uh, focus a lot on conversion optimization, but also on, on uh, email marketing because that's also a way of working with what you already have. Um, and yeah, that's that's been uh, my story uh, over the last 20 years. What a background deal is. Okay, as you said, you like now working within your agency, but what do you do? What you do? Yeah, I think I I just get a lot of um, a lot of fun and energy out of mainly I think mainly out of A B testing. Uh, it's just so um, so liberating liberating to be wrong a lot of the mm-hmm. times. And uh, let me explain that A B testing is really about finding out what works best and. I've been doing this for a long time and I know a lot about conversion optimization. I've, I've written a book about it and still I get it wrong all the time. And it makes you so humble because <laughs> uh, um, you test it and you think like, oh, this one's probably going to win and then it loses and you're like, uh, <laughs> okay, I was wrong. And uh, it keeps you, I don't know, on edge and you know that you have to learn a lot and, and you just don't. It never, it never ends and uh, you can't know it all. And, uh, I don't know, I, I, that's, that's just, I get a lot of, um, energy from that. And, uh, yeah. And that, that really feels me, uh, makes me feel fortunate <laughs> that I can do this. Let's put the man aside. 
How do you know you are successful? Okay. For, I think success is, is different for, for uh, every person. Um, for me personally, it is doing what you like doing, getting paid for it, um, and, and, and being happy about it. Cause there's, I mean, there's always, um, you can always look up to other people and think like, oh, this, I, I this, they're doing a better job than I do, uh, or they're, they're m- making more money than I do. But it's also, um, realizing that you're already doing great. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's a, a crucial in success is being happy about it as well and recognizing that you're doing good things already. Uh, cause, there's always someone out there who's making more money, doing it better, getting bigger clients. I don't know what, um, but just being happy with where you already are is, a, a, for me, it's a, a crucial element of being successful. Tell my audience about the magic moment. The day suddenly all went right for you. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a that's a, a tough one. Um, I think there's a lot of um, smaller moments that lead up to aha moments where you really get insight and insight into what you're doing as a business. And I think it's really the journey where all of a sudden a lot of elements click and come together. Um, and, and you notice that even the failures that you went through, uh, that they, they taught you something and they helped you in, in making choices right now. And they helped you be the person you, you are right now and be, uh, and, and having the company you have right now. Um, I think it's, it's all of those smaller moments that add up to some of the aha moments that you sometimes have like, Oh yeah, of course. Sure. Uh, I think that's where the magic is, is really learning from, from the past and, and, uh, bringing that all together. As you mentioned, you've been in business for the last 20 years. But can anyone be an entrepreneur or are some people more cut out for it than others? Yeah, I, I think I was talking about it to my wife uh, this week. And I think as an entrepreneur, you have to be a, a bit masochistic even. Um, it's not even, not, not, not always easy. There's a lot of ups and downs, um, a lot of um uh, I, yeah, sleepless nights, uh, or you wake, um, for me, typically it's like I wake up five in the morning sometimes and I, I start wondering, oh, I should have done this or, oh no, I should do that. And, and I keep worrying. Um, that's, that's the life of an entrepreneur. I mean, it's a lot of ups and downs. The ups are great. They're awesome, <laughs> but the downs are really hard because you take it very personally. If you're, if, if you're not prepared to, um, to, to accept that, um, then don't start it. I don't think everyone should be an entrepreneur. Some people are way happier, uh, in, in a comfortable job, um, and, uh, doing just normal office hours, not too much stress, and they can focus on all, uh, activities besides work. And, uh, that's totally fine. Uh, we, we don't all have to be an entrepreneur, but if you are going the entrepreneurial path, be prepared to take the ups, but also the downs because the downs are the hardest. And you sometimes feel alone as an entrepreneur. Um, uh, when, um, when, when you are in those downs, it's, it's sometimes very hard and you feel like everyone's against you and, uh, it's, it's not working out as you planned or, or hoped or dreamed. Um, so yeah, if, if you're not prepared to take those lows, um, then, then don't start as an entrepreneur, I think. What are you still doing in a way you work that you just know you have to stop doing? That's an, uh, a good question. <laughs> and I'd say, if you ask me today, it's probably going to be a different answer than, uh, than, than tomorrow. I think for me personally, um, letting go is, uh, is super important if you want to grow your business. And I mean by letting go is uh, trusting your team, um, not micromanaging, not being, not trying to interfere with everything, but trusting the people you, you work with. And I think as an entrepreneur, that's, that's very hard to do sometimes because it's your baby. After all, you created the company and, and, and you're growing the company. And we, we as entrepreneurs, we also think like, oh, the way I do it is the best way to do it. Uh, and it's not always true. Sometimes you have to let go and get out of the way and let your team do what they do best. And, uh, and your business will thrive sometimes because of that, because you, you, you let go and, and you step aside. What are some common misconceptions about conversion optimization? Oh, there's a, a lot of um, miscommon uh, or misconceptions. I think uh, one of the things that a lot of people think is um, let's do just 
this this just as a project look at my site tell me what i should do and let's get over with it uh, uh conversion optimization is really a, a long term process uh it's it's um it's a continuous cycle of uh, um getting the data understanding the data and then a b testing Every A/B test will lead to new data that you can analyze, and will lead to new ideas to test. And so it's a, a continuous cycle that that really never uh, never ends. It's it's always trying to optimize. I think that's one of the uh, common misconceptions. Another one that I would say is um, a lot of people uh, expect way too much of conversion optimization. Um, they think they're going to 4x their business uh, with conversion optimization. And whereas, well, I mean, sometimes that's possible, but then your your site probably really sucks. Um, but uh, usually that's not going to be the case. I mean, if you if you add 20, 30, 40, uh, 50% to your business doing conversion optimization, that's 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 great and be happy with that. But don't expect like 4xing your business. Um, that's, that's also a... a a big mistake I uh, I see a lot of people make. They they start doing this uh, with the wrong expectations. Um, they expect too much uh, uh, results from it, or they um, think every test is gonna win. For instance, obviously, if every test would win, why would you still be A B testing? Because obviously, then you know what's gonna uh, what's gonna win, so you don't need to test it. So um, yeah, start you re- when you do conversion optimization, you really have to start with the right expectations. Um, and and uh, another thing that I see as well is um, uh, a lot of preference for like radical changes, radical redesigns. Uh, uh, like, okay, let's change our entire site, um, and we'll see a higher conversion uh, conversion rate. And typically, um, you might, in some cases, you might really see an impact. But we see a lot of uh, instances where. Uh, Clients, they, they've just changed their site completely. They spent months on it. They, uh, spent a lot of money on it and then they go live and the conversion rate actually drops. Um, we see that happen, uh, all the time. And, um, I think that's also like a common misconception. Like if I want to have a higher conversion rate, I should have a totally new site and, um, a better, well, a, a good analogy there is if you have, uh, um, Let's let's say you have a couple of problems on your site, and those, those a, a problem. Let's say that's a fly. Basically, what you do with a, a completely a new redesign, um, you bomb that fly to kill the fly because the fly is bothering you. So you bomb it. Uh, that was what's going to happen. Is uh, well, it's going to cost you a lot of money. You're probably going to kill the fly, but you're going to have a lot of collateral damage. Whereas um, with real conversion optimization, what you do is you're going to try and kill that fly with a few well-aimed shots, and that's going to be less expensive, and you're going to kill that fly, but you're going to keep the rest uh, that is working uh, properly. You're not going to have any collateral damage. So basically, you make changes to a site step by step and uh, by A-B testing, and you only implement it when it's going to uh, make you more money. And uh, it, it's, you, you can do a lot of A-B testing for the, the money that you usually spend on an entire redesign as well. So it's, it's just a, 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 a better investment um, when it comes to changing your site. Okay, as you mentioned, you've been in business for a long time. What have you learned from business as a whole? I think uh, business as a whole, um, what is the, the secret to success, I, I think, um, is starting with a uh, target group. And I think a lot of people, and I, I'm, I'm, I made that mistake uh, as well, I guess. Um, a lot of people start business thinking of a product they want to sell or a service they want to offer. But what we all should do is start with who do we want to serve um, and serve that's not only uh, selling services, but all, could also be selling products to that a particular person. I think that's where the, the, the real um, uh, foundation of any entrepreneurial success lies is, is if you can uh, narrow down to certain target audience that you want to serve and then you come up with the product and a, or a service that can serve that audience best. That's where uh, a, a business will, will, uh, will really thrive. And um, that's something I've learned over the years uh, is, is really try to make that shift. And if you if you haven't started your business yet, start with a person. Start with a person or a company type or whatever you want to call it. But and uh, find out what that person um, is experiencing as a problem or how can you help that person? What do they want to buy? Uh, and then figure out how you can serve that person with your goods or services um, and and, and build your company around that. So fall in love with the person rather than with the product. I think that's that's uh, that's really important if you want to uh, 
uh, build a, a successful business. What is one thing that has contributed to your success? I think for me, it's uh, trying to um, listen and learn from people who uh, who've done it uh, before you. Uh, I think that that's important. Like if it's a, a coach or a mentor, or um, th- th- that's important. But also, if you can afford it, because sometimes that costs money. But but you don't have to have a coach or a mentor. You could be a part of of uh, Facebook groups, masterminds. If, um, it, there's there's so many options out there. But don't um, don't stay on your own little island. Uh, go out there, learn from mistakes other people made. What is the most common mistake people make when it comes to Google Analytics? Google Analytics, I think the most common mistake is that people um, look at data that are maybe nice to know, but that you cannot really, that are not really actionable. So uh, what, stuff like, let's say time on site. Okay, that's great. Uh, So my time on site went from one minute 15 to one minute 30. So what, what does that mean? Not much. Maybe your site just became slower and people had to wait longer for pages to load. So you frustrated them. So it doesn't really mean anything. I think um, there's so many data in Google Analytics that um, uh, people get drowned in in data. And there's uh, not a a shortage of data in analytics. There's a a shortage of insights. So what I would say is um, if you you look at data, always ask yourself, so what? What can I do with this? How can I use this to make the uh, the, the experience of, of my customers better to get a higher conversion rate uh, or whatnot? So look at what can I do with this? Uh, I think that's the most common mistake I see is people getting hung up on, uh, on yeah, I mean, vanity data, uh, but you can't really do anything with it. So focus on those uh, data that are actually actionable. If you could rerun the first year of your business, what would you definitely know to do? What I that relates back to previous question. Um, I would not have started with services. I I was in love with conversion optimization, um, and I really wanted to do conversion optimization. And I felt like, oh, okay, maybe if, uh, that that took me a while. It took me probably in a, that first year over the course of that first year. Uh, I. I I did some conversion optimization for some lead generation sites for e-commerce. And then I was like, no, oh, maybe I should focus on e-commerce. If I would have to do it again, I would uh, first think of, okay, who do I want to serve? Um, and if that was e-commerce uh, and I love e-commerce, it probably would have been e-commerce. I probably wouldn't have started saying like, hey, I'm going to sell conversion optimization for e-commerce, but I would have uh, spoken to a lot of e-commerce owners and tried to understand their real pains and see how I could uh, solve that. So uh, I, that, that, probably would have um, yeah, got me way farther uh, and, and, and way shorter time uh, than, than right now is it really talk to you, to your customers. And uh, I didn't do it. In, I mean, I spoke to my customers uh, when I was talking about the projects and that kind of stuff, but not really to do a deep dive and really understand what they're looking for and how I could help them by changing maybe my services or my offering. Um, I, I, I started with the services and not with, the, the person in mind. So I, uh, that's definitely something I, I would do differently now. What grounds you? I think um, I like to step away from uh, from the day to day. And and I think like I, I love cycling and clearing my head that way. And uh, by stepping away, you get a lot better view on things. Um, you understand the world better. You understand your business better. And uh, I don't believe in uh, spending eight to 10 hours a day or longer uh, behind your screen and trying to find uh, answers uh, there or by Googling it. You just have to step away. That's where you uh, you get creative, where you get insights, where you see things differently, where you see your business differently. Um, and I, I think um, just getting that fresh air, uh, stepping outside and uh, uh, riding my bike, that, that, that really helps for me. Uh, in your businesses, do you have uh, a mentor or a coach? Yeah, so I've, I have a couple of things. So I, I work with a, a coach uh, right now. I've had a couple of coaches in, in the past as well. Um, I, I just started working with a new coach uh, recently, uh, well, as of uh, last week. Um, apart from that, I, I do have a network of people who uh, are an, an, on a similar path uh, as I am, and we um, we schedule like monthly calls, just one-on-ones where we go over stuff and, and d- d- 
those are friends as well, uh, where we can really talk about uh, the things that keep us busy in, in, at night and that we uh, worry about sometimes. And that, that's really helpful to see other people having those same struggles because I think as an entrepreneur, sometimes you think you're uh, doing this all alone and you're the only one uh, having those problems. Um, so yeah, that that helps as well. So having those uh, few friends uh, that are on the same path as me uh, and then we have regular, regular calls together. What is the most valuable thing your network has told you? Wow, <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I I think um, for me, to be honest, I, I, I'd say what I've been saying two times already now is really f uh, fall in love with the person first and then your product, not the other way around. Um, that's really something I, I've learned from my network. And uh, I, I guess I probably needed to hear that a couple of times before I... I it started to sink in. And again, that's also by stepping away and, and, and riding my bike and clearing my head, I, I, I get to think about it. And then I, at some point I clicked in, in my head. I was like, that's such a simple advice that really changed my perspective on, on business uh, completely. Um, so I, I think that's probably the most valuable um, advice I got from, uh, from within my network. What is one thing no one knows about you? One thing no one knows about me. Um, well, some people do know I'm, I'm a cycling enthusiast, but I think uh, and this is going to be very nerdy for cycle, cycling enthusiasts. I've once had a, a private tour in the factory of Eddie Merckx. And if you, you're not into cycling, it probably isn't, probably not going to ring a bell, but uh, he's uh, only the uh, greatest uh, cyc uh, cyclist ever in history um, of mankind. Even he's, 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 uh, yeah, uh, extremely uh, popular. Uh, he's, he's, he stopped he retired, I think, even before I was born. But uh, a couple of years ago, I had the, the honor of uh, getting a private tour uh, in his factory uh, with him. And I, I think not many people know that about me, but I'm a, a cycling nerd and it goes to uh, that extreme, even that I'm proud of that particular moment. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> what is your favorite e-commerce analytic tool? My favorite, I think user testing, and it's not really a tool as such, but it's a technique. Uh, if you want to use a tool for that, it's, uh, I could recommend user feel. Um, it's, they're reasonably priced. It's, it's a good tool. Um, but the, the, the thing is a lot of people, um, think in, in quantitative data when it comes to, um, and, and uh, analytics tools. Um, but there's also a qualitative part uh, to it. And I think the qualitative part sometimes is uh, more interesting than the quantitative because the quantitative you'll see in analytics, for instance, you'll see, oh, there's so many people dropping off on that particular page. Okay, fine. But why is that? Um, that's, that's an important question that you cannot answer with quantitative data. So qualitative data like user testing um, will, will help you understand why people are struggling on your site. So basically what you do is um, you set up an, a, a a user test in a platform like user feel. They have a, a lot of testers, regular people who earn a few uh, dollar or pound uh, doing a user test. And then they get assignments from you and they'll have to complete those assignments on the site and they have to comment out loud and you get to see their uh, screen recorded as well. Now that combination is really powerful. You see what they do and you hear what they're uh, thinking and um, that makes it so powerful. You'll, you'll get insights you never thought of before. Um, and if you have to do one thing uh, before before optimizing your site, I'd, I'd start with that. That's that's it's so po powerful. You'll get so many insights to to improve your site or to a B test. Um, you, you can yeah uh, you can get a long way with just uh, user testing. Let's talk about your business. Tell us more about it and who can you join? Right. So uh, what we do is is we um, we work with what e-commerce companies already have. So we work for e-commerce companies. And um, if you think about it, a lot of uh, companies, they focus a lot on traffic, but traffic is just one lever to increase uh, your business or your revenue. Um, there, you can also increase your conversion rates. So um, by working with the visitors you already have, you have those visitors, why not try to convert more of those visitors? The second thing we do is we work on average order value. So you already have transactions. Why not 
try and make more out of every transaction. And then the third thing that we do is we focus on uh, purchase frequency, and that's a lot of email marketing. And purchase frequency, basically, you already have those customers. So why not try and make more out of every customer that you already have by uh, selling uh, again to them? Um, and so that's that's really our uh, our core business is really working with what uh, e-commerce companies already have. Where can we find your product and how can we connect with you? Right. So um, we're, our site is Dexter.agency and uh, you can uh, email me on uh, yoris at Dexter.agency or uh, I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn as well. So feel free to connect uh, there. Uh, and by the way, if, if uh, yeah, I, I've written a book about conversion optimization for e-commerce. So if uh, any of the listeners out there is interested in the topic and wants to learn more about it, um, you can go to Dexter.agency slash free dash book and there you can um, uh, download a free PDF version uh, of my book that usually well normally it, it, it's $19 on Amazon but you can f- uh, download a free uh, PDF version uh, of my book on that particular page. Wow, thank you. There will be more from Yoris in a moment. If you are listening to this on a podcasting platform and you are encouraged by Yoris's journey, please go to our website at the online success journey.com. The site has tons of audio clips from hundreds of successful entrepreneurs, guests, journeys, all there to help you find a path to your own online success journey. The site offers exclusive members only content and you can join absolutely free and be part of this amazing online success community today. Check it out. That's online success journey.com. Now, Yoris, I would love for you to share more with my audience if you are up for it. Right, sure. Thank you. Tell us what your favorite movie is that has some relevance to being an entrepreneur. <laughs> okay, you got me there. I'm not really a big movie watcher, and I, for some reason, I, I tend to forget. <laughs> Maybe I should have mentioned that in, in one thing uh, people don't know about me um, mm-hmm. instead of the cycling thing. Um, I, I I don't really, I'm not a really big movie watcher and I tend to forget what I've seen. Uh, it happens to me one, a lot. Uh, I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch that movie. And then I'm a half an hour in that movie. And then I realize I've already seen it before. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to pass on that question because I don't really have a, a good answer for that one. If your business was down to its last $100, how would you invest it? I yeah that's a good question I I'd, I'd say talk to my customers and try to understand or customers or previous customers since it's only down to $100 uh and try to understand uh what I should be changing and then start from there again What is the best business book you have ever read Um I I don't remember the title, but I think uh, I enjoyed Mike Michalowicz, one of Mike Michalowicz's uh, books. Uh, that was a, a really good one. Oh, there's so many good ones, uh, but I, I, I'd go Mike Michalowicz. Um, the, that, that's pretty good. Build to Sell is another one that I remember was a, was a really good as well because it's like it's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward, uh, but it it's it helps you uh, understand um, how you can eventually sell a business in a very simple way uh, it's written and i think uh, another one that probably was one of the triggers for me um to uh, on my online journey is has been four hour work week um and uh, th- i know it's a classic uh, a lot of people tend to t- take it literally uh, but for me, four-hour work week is really uh, about a certain mindset and uh, about productivity. Uh, I've I've become uh, way more productive uh, after reading uh, four-hour work week, and it was never really after only working four hours a week. Although obviously that that'd be great at some point, uh, but uh, it, it's it's about a certain mindset and about uh, being more productive. What your insurance or encouragement have you got for my audience who are not quite there yet? Keep going and, and uh, believe in uh, your ID if your ID has been validated by uh, your person, as I've mentioned before. So if you know that you're on the right track and you sometimes feel that you're alone, uh, know that there's a lot of other people out there and it's normal. It's part of the journey. We, as, as an entrepreneur, you go through a lot of ups and downs. So when you're in those down moments, know that the ups are coming back. And I think that's really important because you can feel uh, really alone as an entrepreneur, uh, but we've all been there. I've I've been there many times, and I'll probably be there many times again. Uh, but by now, I know and understand that uh, 
yeah, there's always an upcoming after the down as well. And you learn from every uh, down and it's just part of the entrepreneurial journey. journey. It, it, it's, yeah, it just is. If you are going to keep a note to yourself in your pocket every day, what mm-hmm. would be written on it? That's a good one. Um, I, I'd say don't work too much. And I, I know that seems... Uh, that seems a bit weird as an entrepreneur, but uh, there's, there seems to be that entrepreneurial hustle kind of stuff like Gary Vaynerchuk, and I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I think real productivity comes from, and great ideas, they come from taking time off. Um, it's a, a Plus, it's also a, a marathon. It's not a sprint. And as an entrepreneur, you sometimes feel like you have to do everything now, and you have so many ideas uh, and you want to do it all now and you're impatient. But at the end of the day, most people still have a lot of years to go before they uh, reach a retirement age. Um, so you have to keep the rhythm up as well. So if you, you burn out too fast, uh, you're not going to make it. So uh, take time off. Don't work too much. Um, work smarter, not harder. So work on being more productive. Um, I think... That, that would be on that note in just a few words. I don't work too much, but that's the whole philosophy behind it. What is your next chapter? My next chapter, um, I'm, I'm currently working on an own e-commerce uh, D2C brand as well that we're going to launch in a couple of months. Uh, so we're preparing that. And it's exciting to see um, the journey that my clients actually have gone through. And uh, this time I, around, I started from uh, a a person. So we, we started with the target group and then uh, we the, the product came next. So we actually, uh, I'm practicing what I'm, what I'm preaching as well. Um, and that's, a, that's the next chapter. Uh, obviously, the agency is always going to be uh, pri- priority number one, but it's exciting to uh, step in the shoes of, of uh, all of our clients um, and understand their journey really from uh, well, in, from the inside out, uh, and that, that'll help us as an agency. Um, and it's also just an interesting uh, journey to be on as well for us. Do you feel like you succeeded, or like you are only on the way? I, I, I've changed my perspective um, over the last year or so. Uh, I think a year ago, I thought I didn't feel really successful, but then uh, I started to think about, okay, what is success actually? And success. It's probably not really about uh, hitting that goal and that number and being obsessive about it, but um, I think it's about doing what you enjoy um, and and uh, being happy already where you are. If you're in a pretty good position, you're making a decent money out of it. You can live from it, um, and and you're on a journey and you're growing as a person. Um, I think that's that's being successful. So right now, I I would say yes, I'm I'm successful. If you had asked a, a, a year ago, I probably would have said no. I still, I'm still not because I I want to be at this point or at that point. Um, it's it's the journey that that counts. And if you're happy, um, and you're growing as a person, and you can financially you can live from it. Um, yeah, you're successful. I'd say. Will you ever stop? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, one uh, one day for sure. I, I I don't have a fixed date for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, abs- absolutely. Uh, I don't I don't plan on working uh, until I die. Um, but uh, I think what I, I can imagine if I would have to stop. Well, let's say I, I sell the business, which I'm not going to. But uh, let's say I, I sell the business now. I could probably take a sabbatical of a year, but then I, I'd get an itch. I, I'd I'd have to start something else. Uh, I guess so. Um, uh, the ideas never run out. Uh, every almost every day, I have another business IT. Uh, so that's that's going to be the same. Um, but uh, at some points, you got to stop working. I'd say, and 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 uh, you can do that already now a little bit by um, really not working too much and enjoying uh, some time off. Uh, but there's hopefully going to be a point in the future where I can say like, okay, it's been enough. Um, I'll I'll go do other stuff now. I've I've done enough. Okay. Remind us how we can connect with you. Right. So um, our site is on Dexter.agency. You can uh, email me on uh, yoris at Dexter.agency or find me on LinkedIn uh, where I'm pretty active. And if you want a free copy of my book, you can go to Dexter.agency slash free dash book. It's a free PDF version, but you save $19 because otherwise it's $19 on Amazon. So uh, 
yeah, it's a good deal. Thank you. Yolis, it's been great to have you here to share your online success journey with us. Great to be here, Patience. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. <laughs> That's a wrap. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Yolis. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Patience and her guest and want you to know there are hundreds of episodes available at OnlineSuccessJourney.com. Patience would like to thank you for listening to the podcast, and she has a free gift for you on her website, including an audio compilation of her guests' best tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. Additionally, there are special clips of over 250 episodes that have never aired on the podcast, and they're only available to members of the online success journey. Check the website and click on Join Now to get free and instant access. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed on your favorite platform to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review the podcast at iTunes and other sites. We appreciate your help and your willingness to share your journey. One last thing. If you're feeling a bit lost or overwhelmed on your own journey, Patience can help. Check out her course on clarity while you're at the website. Finding clarity is a great way to get back on the right path. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.